Hello everybody and welcome back. It's been a little while since I put out a video and um, I'm excited about this one. I have something that I really am very excited to talk about. Um, you'll have to excuse me please, I've been a little bit sick recently. Got that winter cold that I just can't shake. It's been miserable so um, I'm, I'm excited but I might look a little bit draggled. Uh, anyhow, it's been a good year. 2018, it's been an interesting year. I've tried some new things, um, had some new opportunities come my way. Some things failed, some things went really well. Uh, new opportunities popped up that I had no idea were even on the radar. And uh, I think most importantly, I've taken a, a new look at knife making, who I am as a knife maker, what I want to make and where I want to go. And I'm, I'm going to use that to slingshot myself into 2019. And I'm pretty excited about the journey ahead um, and uh, always excited about the journey ahead. If you're not excited about the journey ahead, then um, you're, you're just not courting the right uh, path, you know, you, you gotta, gotta be excited, keep the, keep the fire stoked. Um, so today's video, I want to cover a bunch of things. I'm not actually in my shop today, I'm just in my office where the design happens. And that's the first thing I want to talk about and, and go into a little bit more detail is my creative process. So I'm not uh, first and foremost a knife maker, that's not what I'm, I'm trained in. I am uh, a designer, so I've worked in print, web, uh, multimedia, designed apps. Um, probably my best skill set these days that I, you know, professionally what I do for a living is user experience design. So that's a lot of analyzing uh, user paths and um, journeys for people, the dissecting markets, figuring out what, what it is I'm selling, what is it I want people to do, how they interact with a product. If I'm working on an app, I need to figure out how do I make this app better? How do I make it more efficient? How do I make more conversions? Um, so that's one thing that I do. It's great, very challenging, and I find knife making is not dissimilar to user experience design of, say, an app. Um, I like to dissect and take that same approach with my knives. So when I start out, I might start out with an inkling, you know, with a sketch, with a with an idea that 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 I might draw out on a piece of paper. And actually, actually, here is here's a knife that I've been thinking about. So I have a, a sheath maker that I work with. Um, Mel Gingrich out of Northwest Pennsylvania. He's an Amish guy. So it's it's an interesting situation because we don't use technology to communicate. I have a good buddy of mine, Josh Vince of Heirloom Craftsman, and I designed his logo. If you check him up, um, great maker, great knife maker. Um, he's going to get into making Damascus and some other supply stuff. He does stabilized wood. Um, but anyhow, so he's kind of my go-to. I, I communicate with Mel back and forth with, with Josh. And he's got this sheath that he used to make for another um, knife maker that no longer makes knives. So, you know, uh, I'm always looking at ways to trim some costs. So if I'm going to put out a knife, I think about, um, you know, it's got to be profitable. You know, if I'm going to make a knife and make a lot of them, I need to make it profitable. I, I'm, while I still want to do one-off and specialties, and I'd really like to get back to building that Viking era sack style, which is my favorite, and um, some Viking swords and really push my skills there, I want to make money as a knife maker. So I have to make things still that people want and use and buy that I can make large quantities of larger for me it's small batch in the in the world of knives and, and production runs and big companies um, so anyhow um, you got to look at ways to trim your costs and one way is by having patterns made so you pick a sheath um, you get a sheath or if you have a sheath you have access to a pattern that you can make stuff for that really helps because you can go from spending a lot of money for your sheath per individual item you know you can spend 50 75 dollars on a sheath um, quite easily and that eats a lot of your profit out if you're selling a 250 300 knife and you're spending 50 dollars on the sheath 
boom, you probably spend it $40 on a nice stabilized handle. There's 90 bucks right out the window. So you're left at 250, 300 bucks. You got 210 left minus the steel. If you've made it Damascus, it probably took you four to six hours to make a billet of Damascus. Maybe you get three or four knives out of it. Maybe you only get two, you know? So uh, when you start to look at the numbers, are you making money? And you really, if you want to be successful and you want to take that step from hobbyist to actually making some money at this, you've got to look at your numbers. Be honest with yourself. Um, but for me, the creative process starts with the sketch. So um, I take my limitations. I know what my measurements, you know, roughly need to be based on where I want to be at. And, and the, the this type of knife is one that I want to put out. So I look at this, scan it in. That's my next step. And then, um, so, so what I'll end up with is I'll trace that sketch and I'll come up with different options. Cause right now what I'm trying to do is determine what's the best knife. I've got this main base model, as you can see, and I want to make it as good as possible, you know, and I want to try different things. I'm not just going to have this one idea and assume that because I've had this idea, it's going to be awesome. So, um, and then from there, you can either forge out a bunch of different ones. You can water jet, you can just draw them out on a piece of steel and cut them out yourself. Lots of different options. Um, I'm working with Phoenix laser, um, Phoenix laser solutions and something like that out of Meadville PA. It's my hometown. I like to, to bring business to where I'm from. So I got those knives. I had them cut out. They do a great job. They are real tight on the tolerance. The angles are good. So everything comes really squared off. I've tried many different water jetters over the last two years. Um, and I've really only been happy with, not only have I been happy, I've really been, I just absolutely love what Phoenix does. I've had uh, water jetters that have actually just had the pattern jump and they gave me back broken toe completely off. Uh, I lost about $300 worth of Damascus at one. Uh, I won't, I'm not going to drop any names, but I'll tell you what, I won't do business with them again. So um, I know that Phoenix does a good job. So for me then, uh, oftentimes the next step, especially when I'm talking about a production run is I'm going to make a little wooden model. Now this is just, this is cheap wood. This is cheap, crappy wood um, that you can get in big long sheets um, at the Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. It grinds really quickly so you can make a, a quick concept with a jigsaw and your belt sander in about less than 10 minutes and you get a really good feel for that knife before you ever have to commit to any steel at all. You can have that base model and from there if, if something doesn't feel right I scan this in retrace it, make the edits. I'll draw right on my wooden blank to kind of get an idea of where I'm going to put handles. You know, I want to test, oh, if I'm going to put a beer bottle opener back here, I can draw it out um, and test and kind of get an idea. Will this pop a top? And, uh, and, and I do I'll go through all these things and I'll make these wooden blanks and then I'll carry this wooden blank around for a while. I fit it to the sheath. I can see, oh, do I like this? When I get a wooden blank that I like, now I know I can commit to the next stage. I, it's comfortable. It feels good. The angles, the geometry is right. Um, you know, and, and with this, I can even test my grinds with it, which is really great to see how do I want to make this. And I can make it a ton of different ways, very affordably, very quickly. I can walk out to my garage and within a half an hour have three or four of these in different, different little changes and know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And from there, then I have them done up in steel. And then of course I still have to grind all of these. This is after I make this video today, I'll be moving into grinding and finishing some of these up and moving them on into production. And then well, you know, I'll finish this batch of five up. I'll run them through a testing process to see which one I like the performance of the best. If I need to make any changes, I'll make the changes at that point and have another run made and then um, whittle this down until this knife is an amazing knife that I can put 100, 200 out, bring them to the blade show or sell them wherever and, um, and have a really great knife, you know, and of course this, the steel choice and all that goes along with it. But for me, it starts with a sketch.
starts with the sketch. Um, and there are a lot of different tools. People ask me, what tools do you use? You know, what, what programs? I use Adobe Illustrator. I use Creative Suite for my day job. I have it. It works for me. I've worked with my water jet um, solution to figure out what settings I need to have when I export out my DXF or DWF file or DWG files out to them. So I have that all saved and set up. And um, there are free programs. Um, Creative Suite Adobe is, is pretty expensive, 560, 580 bucks a year. Um, you get a lot with it. You get you know video editing software and uh, development software and uh, all the stuff that I use for my day job. So it's worth it for me. It might not be worth it for you, but there are free, free programs out there. Um, so why do I do that? What's, what's in it for me in this process? Why bother taking so long and, and why put so much care into a knife? Um, well, I love knives, you know, and I want to make good knives and I want to make informed decisions. And just like in my day job, I don't want to just design a website or an app to my preference or my boss's preference or my client's preference. It really isn't even up to them. It's what's the subject matter, who's the market and what is best for them? What are they into? What works good for them? Now, when it comes to knives, I have some personal preference in there because I like to make knives. I like to make certain style knives. And and while I love to make saxes and this is not a sax, it's, it's not that hard to see the influence of uh, what type of sax is, is my favorite. And if you've guessed the Anglo-Saxon, a lot of the Thames finds and stuffs, um, yeah, this is influenced by that. No, it's, it's not influenced by the Bowie. I actually really don't like Bowie knives all that much, even though, but I think the sax is a grandfather to the Bowie knife. And um, uh, some Bowie knives I like. I'm not going to throw them all out with the bath water, but um, the sax is my love, you know. But uh, we live in a modern times. I'm not actually a Viking. I don't go on raids. Um, and when I'm home, I'm not a farmer. So, you know, I, <laughs> I love to, I love the style. I love the artistry. I love the craftsmen of the Viking era period. Um, I have Anglo-Saxon um, ancestry. So to me, I have a lot of ties to this style knife and I want to find a way, you know, it's what I've been on a, on a course to find ways to, to, to keep that shape and into what I do to keep that excitement. And this is one of those ways. So, um, you know, this knife, I plan on bringing this knife out this year in, um, you know, 100, 200 to start out with and see where it goes from there. If it sells well, I'll get more of them made up and get them out and, uh, and move on. Um, I think it's also important when you, when you talk about designs and knives to get inspiration, um, to touch other people's knives. Uh, other makers, etc. Go to Blade Show. Pick up every single knife you can, and uh, and and when you can't, when you don't have a ton of knives, if you can't afford to buy a bunch and, and handle them all the time, there are our magazines. So, for instance, this is the Knives Illustrated Best Knives, um, the new knives that came out this last year. Uh, I, my wife gave me this for Christmas, and I took a look through and and. So for me, as a designer, uh, my experience going through a magazine may be different than other people. Um, what I'm looking at is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start taking looks at knives and I make visual edits. Oh, if I would have made this knife design, I would have maybe done or changed or adapted this, you know, and I find different knife styles that I like. And okay, so here's one. It was a real interesting one for me. This is the uh, 511, uh, which it's a Faro knife. It's a camp knife. It's a 13 inch. It's got a seven inch blade. It's um, SCM 435, quarter inch thick spine. And it's uh, $120 from uh, 511 Tactical. There's something, I don't know what it is about this knife. I don't particularly like it. I can't stop looking at it, you know? Um, and I don't know how, it looks like it might be ergonomical. It is not my style knife. It's not something I love. I don't love this big choil. I love this finger piece here. I love what they did back here. 
with the the rear finger grip you know ability you can I feel like you can swing this knife and hold on to it with the way that this is designed but it it's absolutely not my style knife however I like it there's something inspiring something really interesting and cool about that knife so um and that's the, you know that's that's cool to get to get to to like take a look at you know here we go to the hunting knives and this one did catch my eye and it obviously it caught the eye of the editors and uh, they're in here and and there's some things that I would do differently with this knife that I mark over with uh, you know little pens oh, will this go anywhere no no but what I'm doing is I'm I'm critiquing I'm evaluating I'm exploring and as an artist as a designer. We learn to do that in art school. You spend a lot of time critiquing other people's work, but uh, critiquing your own is very important. And that's what I do. You know, I uh, sketch my knife, I critique it, I resketch it, I I trace it, I bring it into a program. I go, oh man, what would I what would I do differently about this? I put it away, look at it another day, print them out, make them in wood, feel them, critique how it feels on my hand, put it in other people's hands. How do they feel about it? And I'd be open to that criticism, open to that critique, accepting of what those opinions are, and accepting the fact that my initial thought, my initial idea might not be perfect right away. In fact, it's, it's not going to be. I can pretty much guarantee your first idea is not going to be the final it. Everything benefits from continued evolution and you know knowing when to stop that is also a thing as well but um accept the critique and that's the thing i see knife makers go online they post some stuff they want attaboys and whatever and it might not be good and then you get some people who are just brutally honest and um you know that's not always helpful either learning how to give critique is also important so in 2019 just think about that think about accepting critiques of your knives Think about giving critiques of other people's knives. Think about giving critiques to your own knife. Be hard on yourself. You know, uh, you're the maker. It's your name. It's your reputation. Be hard on yourself. Um, and that comes down to you. Know, there's a lot of other things. You know, I get that knife made. You know, I think about uh, not just the blade, but now I'm going to take. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the extreme close up on my beard. I did just trim it though. So. Um, think about your handle materials. You know, this year I've tried a variety of different handle materials. I, I've, you know, all, I think almost all of this has come from JanceKnifeMaking.com. They have a lot of really good basic knife handle supplies. And I make a lot of little knives, so a lot of this stuff is, is thin for that. Um, but think about your color combinations. Color combinations, it's an important aspect of the knife, you know. Um, uh, recently on Instagram, Very Good Knife Supplies has come up with some really unique colors, some really fantastic micarta. And there's a few suppliers that I am going to be looking at for 2019 that are providing some different stuff other than just your typicals, browns and greens and black and whatever, you know, reds, um, some really interesting oranges and um, just uh, burst micarta patterns that are really cool. There's, and I'll put some links. I'm gonna dump some links in the description of this video of things that I'm going to try out in 2019 to make my product unique, more unique than your product, perhaps, which is the goal, you know? I need to be my own maker, you know? So it's okay to take inspiration. It's okay to look at other knives, but don't make other people's knives. Make your knife. Make your knife. Make it interesting. Make it different. Make it good. Um, test. Test. That's another thing I do in my day job. Uh, product testing. You know, if I make an app and design an app and never test it and put it out there, it could be riddled with problems. You've got to test it. You've got to use your own stuff. You've got to make sure it works right. You have to make sure it functions. You can't just say it's going to function and then uh, hope that it does what it say because in your head, that's what you wanted it to do because it may not have actually turned out that way. So test it, test it, test it, try it and put a known good solid piece out on the market. And then finally, once you're starting to put out batches of knives and you're starting to think about the full package, actually think about the package, you know? Don't just take a knife, throw it in a sheath, wrap it up and stick it in a padded UPS envelope or USPS envelope and ship it off to people. Get a nice box. You can get this box. This is a box I buy. It won't break your bank. 
But it's a nice looking, premium looking box. Also, wash your hands before you put this box together. Uh, it's white. It will leave some words. Um, I think you can get this box starting at 85 cents a box for around 50, maybe less than that. Um, but if you're buying 100 or 200 boxes, you can get the price down to 50 some cents a box. Add that to the cost of your materials and stuff. Um, and now you have a really nice package presentation. So when people get this, they, from the very instance they get the package in their hands, they're having a quality experience. Upgrade your box with a little custom packing tape. You can get a roll of packing tape for around $60, 300 feet of packing tape, custom designed from Sticker Mule for about $60. You know how many knives you can put out? I can put out, oh, I think it's 300 feet, I can put out 450 eight, nine inch strips on a knife box. So for $60, that's worth it. That's worth the extra pump up, the extra branding, so that when people see your box, your knife come in the mail, they get all this like secrety brand goodness. You know, so I've got all this stuff that I've designed in here, t-shirts that I've done before, strike while the iron is hot, let's get hammered, more of my branding with my website down there, logos everywhere, it's got my name, it's got these little shields. Um, very cool stuff, it's interesting, it's unique, and it helps make the customer feel important um, because I've taken care of this product. I love this product, so you can love it to your fullest as well. One of the other things I wanna talk about now, because um, I'm gonna wrap this up soon, I've been battled on for a while, is staying profitable. Not a quick part of the conversation, but I'm going to try to boil it down really quickly. You have to know if you're profitable, which means you're gonna to have to track expenses, you're gonna to have to track time, etc. cetera. Um, this year, I put out a blacksmith knife. I actually don't have one on hand right now, but um, you know what, I can probably pull up the picture really quick, one second. All right, I found it. Click on this on my Instagram, Josh A. Weston. It was this knife right here, and it was released uh, through Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I put 100 out with them, and I made 20 extra myself that were, um, you know, the edges were cleaned up, sold it for a little bit sharper, or a little bit more darkened. But I, I came up with this knife and uh, sold a run of these. Now, to do that, I, I need to know, is this knife gonna be profitable? I'm looking at putting another run together. I've got 50 more blanks in my shop right now. So I've put together an Excel document that has tracked over here. These are the various steps and you're probably not gonna be able to see it and that's fine. Um, but it, it, everything from, you know, everything that I do and how long it takes me to do that, which means that while I've been out in the garage working on this and making this knife, I'm timing, I'm timing myself. So if I'm doing 10, you know, in the morning, I'll put 10 together and um, I grind and, you know, hammer and twist and whatever I have to do to that. And I get 10 of them done in an hour and a half. I take that hour and a half, divide it by 10, um, divvy that up amongst the different steps or just kind of pay attention as I go with a stopwatch, literally timing myself. How long does it take me to do this? I document that in my Excel file. Then I have in a second list, right next to that, I have all of my material and cost for my sheath, and paper, st steel stock, grinding belts, compound, electricity, quenching, uh, propane, shipping boxes, shipping tape, all of that. Anything that costs me in this knife goes in this column so that I can add those two together. I know, okay, well, it takes this much time at my shop rate of X amount per hour. Um, I have to be able to make this plus my material cost to break even. If I wanna make 25% profit, then I add, you know, I have another formula for that that is uh, times 1.25. That gives me the price I need to make 25%, the price I need to make 50% profit. So, um, and then I have down here at the bottom, it's, how, how much time does it take for me to make 50 pieces? It takes me 1,800 minutes, which is 30 hours, you know, and that's if I'm, I'm moving at a good clip and, and really in it to get that done, and that cost me 1,678 bucks. So for me to even make 50 of these, I've got to have $1,600 available to make that happen. And 
that, and that moves into, okay, plus the time, if I figure my time, so if I'm paying an apprentice or somebody to help me, what's the rate on that gonna be? And that basically, that, that doubles, almost doubles the price um, to make that happen. So you're looking at, at quite a bit of money just to put out a simple knife. And um, the great part about this, documenting this and taking a look at it, you go, okay, here's how many I need to make to make money. This is the time frame I need to make them in. You know, uh, okay, well, I wanted to put it in this style sheath, but this style sheath cost me $30. Well, can I get, you know, with my cost, can I get $100 out of this knife? The answer is no. You got to tweak something. Something's got to give. So sheath costs have to go down. Um, the steel choice that you use, hopefully you don't do that. That you do not want to suffer on steel costs. But you do have options in the steel ranges. You know, a good uh, high quality um, 10 series can work just fine for a lot of knives. In fact, that knife that I made is a 1095. Would I go to a 1060? Would I go to a, a 1040 on that? Or 4140? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, um, it's a small knife. It needs to be hard. It needs to be sharp. It needs to be something that people can rely on. So I wanted to make that out of a really quality steel. And that's one thing that I don't want to do. I don't want to sacrifice my quality just just to shave a couple of pennies. So for me, it's about figuring out the right dynamic of what you shave. Which is the mentality that I had to use when I won on Forged in Fire. When I came back the second time in the Fan Favorites episode, I had practiced what part of this process do I have to cut out so that I can win, so that I can continue to keep going to the next level. And uh, I analyzed it and um, tried to put that into play to help inform me as I went. And that's something I put into my everyday night. I hope you found this video enjoying. I know I just kind of sat here and talked for a while, but it's really interesting stuff. And throughout the year of 2019, I plan to continue this conversation and bring you along the way to the behind the scenes of what it takes to be a successful knife maker more than just a hobbyist, more than just, oh, hey, I want to go forge something today. I've been through those years. Those years are fun, but now it's, it's time for me to really get serious, for me to button it down, for me to make this, um, effective for me to make it profitable for me to make it successful so uh, i have some goals for 2019 i would love to get in a magazine not just a catalog that's selling something but i'd like to get in a magazine with a, a really well-made knife at some point um i would like to shoot obviously i want to shoot more videos um youtube I'm making a commitment to be more prolific on YouTube this year. Instagram, really very happy. All of you have been so great. I have uh, almost 11,000 subscribers now or followers there. That's awesome. I hope to see more of you on YouTube in the coming years. Uh, and, um, and, and a higher quality, so more production knives. I'm working on creating a lineup of what, what the knives are going to be that I am going to offer uh, on a regular basis out of my shop. And this process that I'm outlining for you right now is the process I'm gonna go through with every single model that if I'm doing a, a batch run, it's gonna go through this. It's gonna be rigorous. I'm going to put it through the works. They will be well-designed, well-tested, ready to go, good solid knives so that you can rely on them when you use them. So like, share, subscribe, watch, watch it again, take some notes, get out there, design something, design some knives, critique yourself, and keep at it, you know, and enjoy it. Remember, if you're not enjoying the journey, adjust something, change it to where you're looking forward to what you have going on. So happy new year, happy end of 2018, exciting year of 2019. I'll see you around.